Hey Tina Lee, we just wanted to take time to tell you how thankful we are for Dirt Road Believer. You inspire us with every message and fill our hearts with Jesus. Thank you for making us laugh, Miss Lee. And definitely for making us laugh. We love you. Love you. Hey guys, I'm getting started packing for a trip I'm so excited about. I'm coming up on my 18th wedding anniversary and Adam told me a few days ago to pack. He told me what weather to pack for, what like dressy casual type stuff and that's all I've been told. So I don't know where I'm going but this is a first in our marriage so I am tickled to death and I can't wait to find out. I'm one of those, I don't, I love surprises. Adam, you could never throw him a surprise party or take him anywhere without him knowing that would drive him insane. But I love it. So he's like, when do you want to know? And he did not tell the kids because you know the kids would have told me already. But um, I said, just tell me when we get on the way. So I'm packing for the unknown and that just thrills me to death. And we'll see. I don't know. My parents are coming today to stay with the kids while we're gone. And they're going to have a big time, so my mind will be at ease about them and how they're doing. And I'm just going to go have myself a wonderful time. Adam's calling it our honeymoon. <laughs> Probably because we didn't have much of a honeymoon. Um, we thought we had all this money to go on a honeymoon, which we did. The money got us there, but once we got there, we could not do anything else but eat the leftovers from our reception and watch TV and go stand out at the ocean a little bit. Luckily, he got paid direct deposit the day we were supposed to come home, so we were able to get enough gas to get back. But yeah, we were young, broke, and dumb. And so <laughs> I think we've prepared a little better for this, um, this trip. But I'm so excited, and it seems like I've, I'm missing something. Oh yeah! I forgot I'm packing you. I'm gonna take you along with me. We'll see you there. We're here and guess where we are? We are nestled in the mountains of North Carolina among a lot of little small towns and so today is just an adventure for us. We have no agenda. We're just seeing what what comes our way today. We've got in mind some things but the forecast calls for a little bit of rain so we've got our rain gear and there's several outdoor things we might want to do but we're just gonna go exploring and the drive here was absolutely gorgeous. The leaves are turning a lot more than they are um, in our neck of the woods so getting to see all the fall foliage and it was just such a pretty scenic drive up here and much of our drive was right along the Nantahala River, so just gorgeous. It's about to take off.
beautiful set. The Box Car Cafe. It's adorable. And everything's made to order. Happy anniversary, honey. Happy anniversary. If you need any more, just let us know. Thank you. Thank you for bringing me on this trip. You're welcome. Thank you for coming. What is that? Hash browns? Hash browns and hotcakes. I went with the box car platter. Nice baking grits. Mama did this. going to pull it out. <laughs> Said the gentleman that served us breakfast heard me wish Adam a happy anniversary and he brought us back a cinnamon roll. Alright, ready? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know you were there. <laughs> you snuck up on me. Put EST 2002. Over here. Fabulous. <laughs> So we found the cutest little Christmas store. It's called Uncle Bunky's Christmas Store. <clears throat> they have the most adorable things. So I have picked something out for you that I'm going to give away in probably December. So I'm going to check out now. How are y'all? Good. Yes, ma'am. We just left Maggie Valley. To Cataloochee Valley, where they first reintroduced elk. We are really hoping to see an elk on this trip. Maybe even take one back for Coleman. <laughs> this may be the one we take back. Okay, the lady said this road would be small and winding, but it keeps getting smaller. And windier in half a mile. Turn right onto Old Catalucci Temple. And we are right on the edge in the middle of nowhere. This road. No, it's not even paved, is it? Please don't meet anybody. If we do, just hit them. What we're on? It's my shepherd, I shall not want. Lord, it's my shepherd, I shall not want. Jesus, take the whale. I think I hear banjos. There's no cell service beyond this point. Paddle faster. Ah. This drive down into Catalucci Valley is just gorgeous. And we managed to get back on a paved road. Look at this foliage. There's a big herd over there, by about 30 or 40, but the one closest to us, he's laying down. I don't know if you can see his horns. There they are, giant. He raised up a little bit. Oh, yeah, big daddy. Come on. Come on, fellas. Stand up. I'm going to lay back on.
compared to that it's smaller. Bull sided major giant bull. We have to get over here. Welcome to Dirt Road Believer. We're back from our adventure and we had such a wonderful time. It was really just a perfect time of being together. And if you're new to Dirt Road Believer, I want to say welcome. Um, today's um, devotion is about marriage. And whether you're married or not married, I think you'll find something valuable in today's devotional. But Adam and I will be the first to tell you we are not marriage experts. We are constantly working things out and figuring things out as we go, but we do it with the Lord. And so really my devotion today just comes from 18 years of being married and what God has taught me along the way. And I have my suitcase here with me because just like I was packing up at the beginning of this video, you know, when I packed up and went on my honeymoon, I had an entire suitcase filled with expectations for my marriage and what it was going to be like and what Adam was going to do for me and how he was just going to fulfill me and you know make me just the happiest person on earth and I think if you've been married a little bit you know for a minute at least then you realize that that suitcase full of expectations that we pack we begin unpacking pretty quickly <laughs> um so here is what God has taught me. He has taught me that I was created to be a helper to Adam. And just like in Genesis 2, he creates Eve to be a helper. And there was a time in our marriage where all of our kids were really little. And I mean, like there was just so much to do. I mean, just to get out the door in the morning, there was so much to do. And most of that responsibility fell to me. And I didn't think it was fair. I didn't like it. And I just, you know, went through a season where I was just praying, God, change Adam, you know, make him do this and make him do that. And, you know, send me some help. And one of the mornings that I was praying, God, change him. God, make our marriage better. I got in the shower quickly after that. And I have never, ever experienced conviction like I did that day. Like, I couldn't even tell what was, what was shower water and what were tears rolling down because it was like every eye roll, every cold shoulder, um, every sigh, 
that I had given him. It was like playing in slow motion. And all of a sudden, God showed me not what Adam wasn't doing, but what I was doing and how wrong I was for really creating the situation that I was in, that I found myself in. And so the, the best thing God has taught me is how I can show humility in our marriage. And guys, humility is an invitation. It is such an invitation and you will always receive a blessing from humility. So my expectations of what I could get out of my marriage, it was all backwards. <laughs> it was, what can I give? What can I give in my marriage? And Andy Stanley says it really well. He says, um, you know, a happy marriage is a couple like racing to get to the back of the line. You know, how can I serve you? And really, this marriage relationship that God blesses us with, it is um, all about loving your neighbor. I mean, everything that we learn from God, everything that we learn from Scripture, our spouse is our closest neighbor. It is the first person and sometimes the hardest person to practice that on. To pra And, you know, he definitely tests and refines us through marriage. We develop every fruit of the Spirit we can develop through marriage. Peace, patience, kindness, gentleness, self-control. Um, and so he gives us marriage as a way to grow us closer and closer to him and to serve. That's what Jesus came to do. Not to be served, but to serve. And when I think about that wives are a helpmate to our husbands, um, there are some unsung heroes in the Bible, wives. And I just want to point out one to you. I really, she does not get enough credit at all. Like there should be a whole book called Zipporah. Let's look, this is Moses' wife. So let's look in Exodus. And she takes helpmate to a whole new level. Zipporah did not marry Moses um, thinking she would ever have to do the things that it called that being the wife of Moses called for. When she packed her suitcase, I promise you, she did not expect this to happen. So we are in Exodus. This is chapter 4, and we're starting in verse 20. It said, So Moses took his wife and sons and put them on the donkey and started back to Egypt and took the staff of God in his hand. So here is, here is Moses. He has already had the burning bush encounter. Um, he is blessed by God. And what better place does a wife need to practice patience than on a road trip on a donkey with her kids? The Lord said to Moses, when you return to Egypt, see that you perform before Pharaoh all the wonders I have, um, I have given you. And I'm going to skip down. So he's telling him, like, I want you to worship me. I want you to do what I say. And then, verse 24, at a lodging place on the way, the Lord met Moses and was about to kill him. But Zipporah, his precious wife, took a flint knife, cut off her son's foreskin, and touched Moses' feet with it. Surely you are, the, you are a bridegroom of blood to me, she said. So the Lord let him alone. At that time, she said, bridegroom of blood, referring to circumcision. Okay, ladies, <clears throat> I know we want our husbands to look good and to be in a good light, especially in God's eyes, but how many of us are willing to take a flint rock and circumcise our sons? Uh, I'm guessing nobody watching this channel, <laughs> not even the men, and I don't know what Moses hang up was with this maybe he didn't like the sight of blood maybe you know it was just the thought of doing that to his son I don't know but for some reason he had a big hang up with it and God was about to kill him and he knew this and he still wouldn't do it and so his wife comes in and she helps she did whatever it took and I think as wives we live in a culture where it's almost comedic to make fun of our husbands and to, you know, laugh at, I mean, there are funny things in marriage, but 
Um, the bait is too easy to take to just undermine our husbands and make them look dumb or incompetent, and they're not. They need our help, just like Mo just like Moses needed Zipporah's help that day. We don't know the reason. We don't know why he had a weakness in that area, but she came to the rescue. She helped him. She made him look good. She gained favor for him in God's eyes, and, and women, we can do that. And if you're not married, if you've never been married and you just are like, so excited about that day, you should be. You should be because it is wonderful. But as you're packing that bag, <laughs> remember that no one is going to make you happy. We're responsible for our own happiness. We're responsible for our own spirituality. And if you are a woman who is in a difficult marriage and um, you know it's hard for you to see why it would be important for you to um, be humble in your marriage, then I just want to share um, a couple of more verses with you. Luke 6, 33 and 34 says, love your enemies, do good to them, and lend to them without expecting anything back. Then your reward will be great. I think sometimes in marriage, even good marriages, we want to give but we also are expecting something in return. And sometimes if you're in a difficult marriage, your husband can seem like an enemy at times. And so if you remember that, and I promise he's seeing everything that you do, especially when you serve him and it's not um, deserved. He sees that. And then the last thing I want to leave you with is Mark 12. This is verse 41. Starting in verse 41, this is the widow's offering. <clears throat> Jesus sat down opposite the place where the offerings were put in and watched the crowd putting in their money into the temple treasury. Many rich people threw in large amounts, but a poor widow came up and put in two very small copper coins, coins worth only a fraction of a penny. Calling his disciples to him, Jesus said, I tell you the truth. This poor widow has put into the treasury more than all the others. They all gave out of their wealth. She gave out of her poverty. She put in everything she had to live on. Some of you are poor in spirit and you are given everything you have to live on just to make this marriage survive, just to make your marriage, you know, get from week to week to week. And I know it is hard, it is hard. But I told you, humility is an invitation. So when you are giving and serving your husband, even out of your poverty, even out of what you're lacking, because he is not giving it to you, then it says it's an attention getter. Because Jesus not only noticed it, he called his disciples over and said, I want you to see this. She has given more. So if you're in a difficult marriage, when you serve your husband, when you're a helpmate to your husband, you are giving more. Thank you so much for being with me today. It is October, so um, I am always praying for my Dirt Road believers. I hope you're praying for this ministry, and I ask you to please share it with someone today. Again, have a wonderful day. Thanks for being with me, and until next time, slow down. Take the dirt road, believer.